Hey boys and girls, this video is for Ryan. I'm helping with a project and basically I want to demo one of many many different ways that you can safely power an inline duct fan. Uh, Ryan is putting a duct fan in one of the long runs on his house to get a little extra pressure on a like a 40 foot run or something like that pretty long run and uh, he's already working on it but he was asking for some pointers and suggestions and uh, I thought I would kind of explain it to him a little bit better uh, about how everything works we've already swapped a lot of emails and and had some fun but uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to put together a demo board now if it looks familiar, this is the board that I've used for some other test projects. I have my normal thermostat installed, just my Honeywell, and just a little connection strip, and uh, a regular uh, control board off of the system here. And I've got a few things jumpered around because obviously it's not going to work normally, not being plugged into uh, not being plugged into an air handler, so. We have uh, some modifications, extra wires and whatnot. But uh, all right, so the basic principle is we have a, an inline duct fan that we want to run. And what we want to do is have the duct fan come on uh, anytime that the heat comes on, the air conditioner comes on, or the fan comes on. And there's, like I said, there's a bunch of ways to do this. There's actual modules that you can buy, depending on if you're using one unit or if you're using, oh, if you have several inline duct fans, they have actual boards that can handle all that. And a lot of times there's stuff on the board that you can use. I'm actually going to do this in a manner that we're not using a lot off the board, so we don't take any chances of doing damage to the board or overamping the board or something shorts. Uh, causing problems. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of different feedback from people saying you could do it this way, you could do that way, and I understand there's a ton of ways to do it, but we're going to do this in the safe manner that will protect the board uh, and protect the transformer as well. So here's how the process is going to work. You have your normal transformer here uh, that powers your board and you have a normal fuse. I have an additional fuse added down here from a previous uh, uh, example we were doing just to protect the transformer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to control the induced draft motor, uh, the on-off control of it, using the where am I at? Using the EAC control down here. Now let's get the camera to focus for me. EAC. Now this particular board has two EACs, uh, one and two, and I believe on this particular board. Uh, one's neutral and the other's positive. I think I tested it and they came out 120 volts. Most boards just have a single EAC, which is 120 volts, and then you use the, the common taps uh, for your neutral leg. But the EAC function on a board, now some of you have a humidifier as well, which handles a, a lower amount of amps. And some humidifiers are 120 volts and some are 124 volts, depending on you better read your board up or check the voltages on them. But this is 120 volts. So what's going to happen here is I have the EAC, which is powering 120 volts, and it is coming over to my transformer. Now this is not a standard transformer. This is just an example transformer. I did not have a normal 24 volt transformer. So for just example, I'm, I'm sticking this 240 volt transformer in here. The outputs on it are only 9 volts, so naturally 120 in is only going to give you 5 out. And 5 out is not going to close that contactor. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. So what I'm doing is a little bit different. So needless to say, we have the EAC, which is powered over to the input, 120 volt input, on my 120 volt to 24 volt transformer. The neutral line on it is tied back over here in the blue. If you'll see it's over here in the blue. I have it tied into the commons. Now if you have a, a common tap on the board free, that's great. If you don't have a common tap free on the board, you can just tie it straight into a, a wire nut set. If you have a wire nut set, 
or you can go back to the, the actual uh, uh, Romex box that they bring in and tie it into the wiring there. But usually it's best if you have a free tap, just go ahead and use that and it'll work great. So once we get over here, uh, normally the low voltage 24 volt side would come out. You'd run your 24 volts out and uh, pick one of the two lines. It doesn't matter which one of the 24 volt lines and put a 3 to 5 amp fuse. I like a 3 amp fuse better. And then the wires go from there to your contactor. Now I don't suggest using a contactor unless you have an enclosed box. Uh, I would use it because it's open frame and you get dust and crap in there and that's kind of overkill. Uh, unless you have multiple items you're running or something. Um, you can use a, a large uh, relay like this. This is a little overkill as well. Um, but this has a pretty high amp rating. Now it's important that you make sure that the amp rating of your relay is going to be just for safe sake uh, at least twice the rating amp rating of your actual uh, in your blower uh, inline blower motor so uh, inline blower fan uh, this is overkill this is something more similar uh, that I would use uh, this has a lot of extra terminals. You don't need all the normally open, normally closed. You just need one normally open terminal. And uh, this is a fairly good example. That's empty over there. You have the coils and then you have uh, contacts and you have two normally open. This is actually off a furnace. Uh, this is rated, this particular one is rated to handle a 20 amp heat coil off of, I can't remember what furnace. But they have some small, uh, small ones like this that, uh, oh, um, golly, something 360s or 380 relays, I can't remember the numbers of them, that are do very similar. You can get for, you know, uh, between 4 and $15 all over the place. They're just normally open. Or you can get normally open, normally closed, and just use the normally opens. So we are going to come over, and uh, you would normally have it hooked up like to the relay of this, and that would be the control section. Now, you need a power the the blower motor as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the neutral wire coming off of the 120 volt inline duct fan and it's going to go all the way back and originally it's going to tie in to uh, your wiring. Now if you have a plug outlet you can use that's awesome. Tighten into the Romex is fine and uh, for my test purposes because it's a 12 volt fan for testing I'm hooking it up to a 12 volt battery. But uh, now it's important to uh, it's important to remember, guys, that when you do these projects, you have to keep in mind the amp load that you're putting on everything. Uh, an induced, I'm sorry, a, a, a duct fan is a little high amperage item, runs you know between 0.8 to maybe a couple of amps tops, plus a little higher on startup, and then it eases back down. So we're going to say an amp and a half tops, um, not a lot but you need to know what's going on. The, the system that we were emailing back and forth on, it's a gas furnace and he has um, a 15 amp glass fuse mounted on a switch right next to the unit. So that's more than enough. We figured out the amperage on the blower motor on the unit and added in the amperage necessary to power the transformer and power the board and we still had about a five amps to play with, give or take. And then in addition to that, you have to take into consideration uh, is that on a circuit by itself or is there something else going on? In his case, there's one 20 amp circuit that powers everything in the attic. And that's not much. It's the gas furnace and it's the lights. And so that's not a problem at all. So we're tying the neutral. In this case, we'll, I haven't actually been able to look at it yet. We're probably going to tie the neutral in uh, to the Romex that's coming in the junction box on the unit itself and uh, unless we add an, elect an extra electrical box on uh, one side or the other of the on the before the switch uh, or after the switch depending on what looks safest and how everything works out amp wise but you have to take all that into consideration I just want to throw that out there safety first and make sure that um, the Romex that's being used uh, to power the furnace and everything is rated. So, you know, this is not necessarily a do-it-yourself project. You need to make sure you get an electrician or an HVAC technician involved because there's a lot of stuff going on here. All right, let's get back to it. So we have looked at the system 
And so far we have brought uh, control power over. Uh, this is a 120 volt tap, comes over and it powers the transform. The transformer uh, neutral ties back into the neutral lines. If you have a neutral tab, that rocks, hit that. The 24 volts that would normally come off the 24 volt side of the transformer is fused on one of the other line, doesn't matter which, and goes to the coils on uh, on your relay. Now, like I said, I'm using a contactor because this is a 120 volt contactor for my purposes for testing, so uh, it doesn't matter there. All right, and now we're powering the fan, so we're taking the neutral and tying it back to the neutrals uh, at the Romex point, wherever we choose to do that at, and the positive leg comes over. Uh, you see, I just have them tied in over here, but and you're going to probably, uh, depending on how far it is, you're going to be tying Romex with wire nuts, uh, maybe soldering with wire nuts and then taping it all off and securing it or using an electrical box depending on whatever the coating is for your city. You got to pay attention to coating for all of this of course. And um, so we're bringing, in my case I have the neutral coming back and tying over here and the, uh, the hot leg on this is coming around and tying to one side of my relay right here. The back side of the relay of course goes back to power. So I have, uh, this is, let's say, my, my Romex box where all my 120 volt ties in. And I have the positive lead going to one side of my, my relay switch. It comes back out the other side, goes around, and ties back into my fan. It just popped loose, so i got to fix that. And the neutral comes off of your Romex and goes to the duct fan. So it's just a, a big power loop, 120 volt loop, and the only switch is right here. Alright, so so everything is set and this extra contactor is representing the contactor out on your condenser unit outside. So what's going to happen is when I turn the thermostat, I'm going to switch the fan on. When I switch the fan on, it is going to turn on one of the relays here, which is going to turn on your blower motor on your actual gas furnace or air handler. It's also going to cut power on, 120 volt powers, to the EAC line. EAC lines, 120 volts, will come up and power the, the transformer, which was sitting there dead before. 124 volts gets transferred to 12 volts. The 12 volts comes over and fires the coil on the contactor or the relay, as the case may be, whichever, whichever you're using. The relay closes and the fan kicks in. And when you turn the fan off at the thermostat, it shuts off. And the same thing happens when you run the air conditioner or the heater. Except when you run the air conditioner or heater, most thermostats have a three to five minute built-in delay. So the inline fan can do the exact same thing that your blower motor is doing on your unit. It's going to have the same delay. All right, so let's hit it and see what we get here. Uh, turn that on. Fan the on position. And we'll click it. You heard the small relay over here kick. We have 120 volts coming over here. It comes over. You now see the contacts on this are closed and the fan is spinning up. We're doing, doing great here. Now I will uh, cut the power off. Let's see. And here. There, auto. And you'll see the contacts pop open again. Beautiful. So, same thing. Now we'll do it with the air conditioner. Come over here, switch it to cool, and hopefully the thermostat's set right. All right. You catch that? First thing you heard was the contactor close. The outside condenser kicked on first. And then, after a second or two delay, you heard the relay over here click, which turned the blower motor on in your air handler or gas furnace and then immediately close the relay for the duct fan and everything is turned on. Now we're powered off. Go over here, go over to heat, back to off position. And now when I close it, this one will open first, but the others won't. Oop. Oop. Get that right. Yeah. So the condenser outside is shut off. And this is still on, and that is still on. 
and after three minutes or so, it'll stop. Okay, there you go. I've racked on for 15 minutes here. There you go. Uh, questions, comments, suggestions, uh, like, favorite, uh, comment, all that good stuff. And I'm sure there will be a lot of other people that have uh, excellent comments. And um, I've seen a few products out there that I'd like to post up, but I'm already at 15 minutes. So uh, if you have some cool links you would like to put, uh, please go ahead. And uh, I'd love to hear what everyone has to say. Thanks a lot.